in this uh, RV really sucks. Uh, let me count the ways. Uh, first off, when it's really hot, like close to 100 degrees, yeah, the RV won't cool off below 85. And yeah, I can't sleep when it's that hot. It's just too noisy trying to watch TV or go to sleep. Many campgrounds have rules about when you can run generators. So after 8 o'clock, you're kind of SOL. So anyway, yeah, we had a problem on our last trip. We were going through Fort Stockton, Texas. Uh, I think it was like mid-April. Uh, but anyway, it was 97 degrees at 4 o'clock, so I just said, to heck with that. We ended up getting a hotel room with air conditioning and a hot tub. Okay. Stay in here for the night. In with a pool inside. Pretty cool. So the hot tub was fine, but uh, in reality, I didn't buy this RV so we could spend the night in hotels. So anyway, I need to do something about it. So today, I'm making three modifications to the AC uh, to improve its performance and to help us to sleep at night. The blower in this uh, Coleman Mach 8 uh, air conditioner just kind of blows the air into a uh, box. It's a plenum. As you can see here, the size of this opening is much bigger than just the side vents. Uh, yeah, and that pressure buildup causes the air to go out into the ducts on the left and the right side. Yeah, it's a pretty simple design, but it doesn't work that well. Before doing this, uh, yeah, I watched a lot of YouTube videos and people made their own baffles and modifications. Uh, they seem to be pretty happy with the results. And one guy was even showing a pre-made one. So I said, hey, that's pretty cool. Uh, why mess around with it if I can just buy a little piece of foam, stick it up there, and it'll uh, move the air into the, directly into the duct. I clicked the link, went to the website. Ha! $180 for a piece of foam. Like, yeah, no way. I think I'll do it myself. Probably take about an hour and I got extra foam in the garage anyway, so... Yeah, let's get started. Cold air comes out here from this fan, and returning air can only go in through here, so it's a really small opening. This piece I'm not really going to use because it just blocks too much air. Every air conditioner is going to be a little bit different, uh, but the idea is the same. You just take some rigid pieces of foam, you make a baffle, kind of direct the air in each direction, tape it all up and seal it so the air doesn't come out. And voila, I don't have a fancy anerometer or whatever it's called to measure the airflow. So instead, I'll just uh, swipe some yarn from my uh, wife's supply cabinet. Just tape it up on the vents and see how much it blows around. I also measured the air temperature. But it's been running for just a little bit. Coming out of the air. And yeah, it turns out it takes about 10 minutes for the air conditioner to really get it cold. Uh, it's got a cool down all the stuff up on the ceiling and the ductwork, whatever. So yeah, it's uh, it does take a little while. So I removed the grill and a plastic plate that was up there uh, and took a look at the plenum. Uh, yeah, I was surprised how small it was. So anyway, it's not going to take much material. I got some ISO board out that I had left over from uh, insulating some other stuff and just cut it up with my saw, uh, taped it together with some aluminum tape and test fit it, put it in there and tried it out. Uh, yeah, I did have to seal all the way around it because I didn't want air coming out of there. I want the air to go into the ducts. So visually, uh, I'm getting more air coming out of the ducts, and it's also a little bit quieter too. It was uh, about 2 dB quieter on the sound meter, uh, especially in the bed area. So yeah, I'm good with that. So I think that was a success. Let's check in the back. Let's see how warm it is up there. Uh, here on the roof, we're looking at you know, 72. It's not very hot out. Uh, there is a little bit of insulation there, but it's still pretty warm up in there. Yeah, 97 degrees. Yeah. So this right here is right where the cold part of the air conditioner is. So yeah, if the shroud is 147 degrees, how much is it inside? I'm gonna insulate this housing right here. Whoa, it's hot. Well, I did put a thermometer up inside there on the roof, so 
uh, just to see how hot it gets. Jeez, it's 103 degrees and 81 inside the RV right now. So what I'm going to have to do is insulate this housing, help keep it a little bit cooler on the inside. So I taped Reflectex uh, all around the perimeter of the housing and on the front and the back sides. Uh, so that's where the hot area is. Uh, but on the top, uh, the shroud actually touches the top and bolts down to it. So there I added some really thin um, sound dampening material. It's like a heavy vinyl with aluminum on it. So I figured, well, yeah, that'll be a nice solid surface to mount it. And I even added a little bit of Reflectex on the inside. The end result is with the low fan running, uh, yeah, the sound in the bed area dropped another 2 dB to 41 dB, so that's pretty good. Uh, yeah, and the temperatures up in the housing decreased from 103 degrees without the insulation to 87 degrees with the insulation. So, yeah, I'm good with that. Um, as a matter of fact, the air conditioning is now is going to start and cool off a lot quicker. this uh, self-start for two reasons. Uh, the main reason, of course, is to lower the starting current. Uh, yeah, my air conditioner pulls like 63 amps to start, and my 2 kilowatt uh, inverter can only provide up to like 33 amps of AC power uh, just for a second. So anyway, um, I really would like to be able to run the air conditioner at bedtime without using generators or shore power. The second reason is my wife's a light sleeper, and the uh, compressor, when it kicks on, sometimes is a little bit of a jolt, and that can wake her up at night. So, yeah, hopefully it'll smooth that out. I decided to go with the uh, Easy Start from MicroAir. There are several knockoffs, like uh, Self Start RV and things like that, but uh, the Easy Start seemed to have the best uh, redu reduction in current. So I didn't want to take any chances, so I went with them. On the Amazon site, they have a model that will work from 100 volts to 240 volts. And I think it even has Bluetooth. Um, yeah, I really didn't need that. I just went to the manufacturer, got their 120 volt version. Yeah, it was like 60 bucks cheaper. So for $300, I said I'd give it a shot. The wiring on this turned out to be a little more difficult than I anticipated. Uh, yeah, it has four wires, but uh, yeah, there's no good way to get them into the electrical box. Uh, they say just to route them through one of the existing openings. Well, yeah, good luck with that. I already had four or five wires in each one. Yeah, this was the hardest part, was getting all these stupid wires in that thing. So, anyway, uh, I think it's okay now. We'll continue Took on. a lot of finagling around and trying to make the little hole a little bit bigger. So, anyway, I eventually got them through the grommet uh, and into that. But uh, otherwise, the hookups was pretty straightforward. Uh, I don't know if I can see it, but that black thing is the start capacitor. And the big one is the run capacitor. Got this sucker out. Uh, I'm not going to need it anymore, so... Goes in the trash. Okay, I pulled the wire off from the uh, run cap, and this is the one that goes out to the compressor. And I'm just going to splice it into the brown. Uh, I ended up shortening the wire because there was just too much there, and then used those uh, Wago connectors. It's the first time I tried them, and they're real easy. Just strip the wire, stick them in, click it back down, and you're all set to go. These soft starts are made to work with just about any air conditioner. So as a result, there's lots of different wiring diagrams. They give you a QR code, you can look it up. Uh, so I did that. Uh, I have a Coleman Mach 8, but it's the early version, so it might be different from yours. Uh, this coach was actually built in 2015 chassis, so, so after I had it all wired up, uh, I came down. I started it from the short power uh, four times in a row. The fifth time, yeah, you need five times for it to calibrate the uh, microprocessor in it. So I decided, well, Maybe I'll try my inverter and the batteries. Turned on the, the batteries, the inverter, put it on cool, son of a gun, started right up. Yeah, as a matter of fact, the startup cycle takes like 10 seconds, so it's a very gentle rise in the current. And I didn't really see any spikes at all on the uh, Victron uh, battery monitor. Other than the wiring and the installation is pretty easy. Two pieces of the VHB tape put under here and now it is secure. That's not going anywhere. All put together, time for the shroud.
That's all well and good, but the uh, real test is in the hot weather, so head out the desert, check it out. Yeah, you gotta go out in the desert where it's really hot. Uh, yeah, it's 100 degrees there this afternoon, so let's see how well the uh, batteries hold up and the air conditioner works. Not bad with a little AC going. The air conditioning is working really well, but after 28 minutes, uh, got an input fault uh, from the uh, inverter. What's up with that? You might be thinking that it's just maybe too hot outside for it. Maybe the inverter itself is overheating. Uh, let me go check in a cabinet and see what the temperature is. Yeah, temperature's still climbing up to 102 right here. Let's see how the inverter's doing. The battery itself. It turns out my inverter did overheat. Yeah, when I checked out the specs, uh, it's only rated for full power at 77 degrees and it's 80% power at uh, 95 degrees. So uh, 1.6 kilowatts, seems like the hotter it gets, the more energy it pulls. Uh, yeah, maximum spec temperature is 104. So yeah, I was really pushing it. But anyway, uh, after I left the door open, I uh, ran for another hour after that. So I got two hours of use out of the, uh, the air conditioner with, I used about half of my battery power, so anyway, that was all good. Uh, I'll just have to check out, see how I can keep that a little bit cooler in the future. Uh, but anyway, the uh, first two uh, modifications, adding the baffles and insulating on the roof unit, uh, that worked out pretty well. There was no drawback. I got a little bit more airflow and a, and a little bit quieter, um, especially in the bed area. And it's a lot quieter than running the generator. Well, I'm happy with that. That was all good and it was really cheap. Anyway, I'm happy with the mod. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.